It must have surprised those who heard that statement that day. It was more than just a sentence, more than just a spoken word. I rather think it was a shout, as if in the utterance of that statement, everyone who was in earshot would have done exactly what the statement said you should do. He pointed, and in pointing, he directed everyone's attention to a man. And yet he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. If you were to be ordained a priest, among the children of Israel, the first thing you needed to learn was how to kill a lamb. The interpretation of the word was the role of the Pharisee. He was the writer of legislation. The copying and the preserving of the word was the role of the scribe. Not one jot or tittle. The end of the droppings of the quill with the ink that accidentally fell on the Hebrew scroll, for even in the Hebrew language, dots are verb endings. Not one extra dot, not one jot or tittle would pass away, Jesus said. The scribe was instructed that the stroke of the pen was the representation of the Word of God. But for the priests, it was different. They were not speakers. They were not copyists. They didn't work with manuscripts. What they had to learn was to kill a lamb. For God's instruction was clear. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so the priests of the tribe of Aaron, the Levites, learned the proper way of the killing of a lamb. And they would go into that inner area a hundred feet from the outer area, which was called the court of the Gentiles. Gentiles could go there, but only the priests, only those from Aaron, the tribe of Levi, were allowed into this center area where there was an altar. We know the size of them. The altars, they were small. And on this altar was presented by the offer of the sacrifice, a lamb. Now the lamb had to be special. It had to be, as we thought this morning in the book of Malachi, not in any way blemished or marked or scratched, not blind or lame, like the Lord Jesus is described in First Peter, as a lamb without spot and blemish, the quality of the sacrifice was as important as the attitude of the heart of the worshiper. And so the first fruit of the flock, the first was brought to God. And that's what causes God such complaint, for that which was the leftover was brought to Him. Remember that all lambs are the picture of the Lamb. Cain and Abel were instructed to sacrifice a lamb. Cain did not, and Abel did. There is one lamb for one man. In the book of Leviticus, at the Passover, it was one lamb for a household. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And there is a lamb for a household, and in John 29 you have the Lamb for the world. You see, everything that we Christians know about God and His plan has its root in the Hebrew faith. So when we speak of the Lamb, when we speak of this supper tonight, we go back again to that picture of the training of the priest whose principal training began 
with the slaying of a lamb. And those coming, sensing their sin, responding to God that the innocent victim must have his blood shed, the lamb of the flock, brings the lamb carrying it in his arms, knowing all alone as the animal struggles and wiggles under the arms of the offerer. Many of these offerers, of course, were not shepherds and they didn't hold animals like this usually. As they took that little lamb and that animal in their arms and brought it to the priests, over a little railing they would come and the priest would take that lamb and place it on that altar and they would place their hands on the head of that lamb. The altar faced north and the head of the animal was placed facing north with the back of the animal facing south. Very important as we'll see in a minute. The animal then was held by the priest who would take it and lay it on it, lay it on its back with feet extended toward heaven and then with one very careful and important and trained act he would take his knife and slice the jugular vein of this lamb and in its dying quiverings the priest would take at the same time the bowl catching the blood as it was drained from the lamb he would then take that blood in that bowl and take it over to the north side of the altar. That was the place of the dwelling spot of God where he would make propitiation, the blood providing the sacrifice that would cover up and atone for the sin of the man whose head is identified as a sinful head, but who transfers his sin from his head as a responsible person, to the head of the Lamb, which is the symbol of the head of Jesus Christ. And this would go on day after day after day as the blood was placed in the bowl and there in the presence of God at the mercy seat of the place of propitiation, God was sacrificed in the person of His Son to offer the substitution for the sins of men. Strange, isn't it? Not so strange when you think that everything that we have tonight in Jesus Christ is because He is the Lamb. My responsibility on my head of my sin transferred to the head of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin of the world. O oh, sacred head, how wounded! See from His head, His hands, His feet. And tonight again, in remembrance of Him, I place my hands on His head and remember the dying quiverings, the agonizing passion of the Lord Jesus as He becomes the sacrificed Lamb for me. How beautiful! Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah for the Lamb! Then the priest would take his knife and sever the skin from the head to the back of the animal and strip away the skin and then drop that skin by the side of the altar. That was his. That was his payment for ministry. He would get the skin of the lamb. And you see, on that skin, after it was dried and cured, the scribe would write the Word of God. So the skin of the lamb becomes the Word of God. And before that, the wool was taken from the skin and the wool became the clothing of the Levites and those in the temple. And then the lamb was cut and the meat was eaten. You see, everything is Jesus. His blood, the propitiation. The meat of the lamb, Jesus says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And we get nourishment from the participation of the lamb. His wool becomes our covering. And the scripture says we are clothed in his righteousness alone. And then the skin becomes the word. And on that ancient skin, dried and cured, the word of God was written. You see, everything is Jesus Christ, the lamb of God. All that the Lamb was to the priest and to the offerer, Jesus Christ is to me. His skin 
becomes the Word. His meat becomes my nourishment. His wool becomes my clothing. And His blood becomes my salvation. Behold, the Lamb of God. He takes away the sin of the world. You see how valuable the sacrifice must have been when it was offered. You see how valuable it is tonight for us to understand the Lord Jesus, our Lamb. And how important it is for us tonight to present ourselves to Him, the Scripture says, a living sacrifice. You see, the symbol ties through. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to our own way, but the Lord laid upon Him the Lamb, the sins of us all. Jesus spoke to Peter and He said, Feed my sheep. See how important it is for us to understand tonight that we are His sheep, the sheep of His pasture, and we should be offering ourselves to Him not as dead sacrifices, but as living. Not as ones who will give our lives physically in obscure martyrdom, but as living sheep and lambs to His glory and to His honor. As we live unblemished and unspotted in the world, we bring glory and honor to our shepherd. One part of the story I kept till now because it concludes my thought tonight, but rather uncomfortable to listen to, but it's part of the story. As the skin was flayed away and as that skin was dropped to the side of the altar and the blood was taken to the north of the altar, the lamb was cleansed of all the entrails and the dung. And that was placed in a box. And one of the cousins of the Leavites, the Kohathites, they were the custodians. They were the clean-up priests. And they took that box of awful-looking entrails and the dung that had not been excreted. They took that in a box and they left the temple and they went, as some of us have done, they went to the city wall and through one of the doors in the wall of the city of Jerusalem. It's there tonight. It's called the Dung Gate. The hole in the wall. Damascus Gate, Sheep Gate. Dung gate, it's called that till tonight. And he went through the dung gate with that box. And he went beyond the gate, and there is the valley of Hinnon, or Gehenna. And he takes the box of the entrails and the dung, that which is of pollution and putrefaction, that which is not to be offered to God. He takes that excretion, and he throws it into the valley of Hinnon, into the valley of Gehenna. It's there tonight. And that was Gehenna, the valley that was always burning. It was the dump of the town. And all refuse and all waste and garbage thrown into this valley area, just a little wadi, you would call it. And there it kept on burning. Dumps always burn. Think of it. The night that Jesus offered the Passover and instituted this feast, it is approximated that 600,000 lambs were slain. The trips to the valley of Gehenna that was always burning, and Jesus one day passes the valley of Gehenna, and He looks at that valley and He says, See that valley? Those that reject God's Word and those that disregard the Savior shall be cast into Gehenna where the worm dies not. You see the picture? And the fire is not quenched where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The picture of judgment. You see, if Jesus Christ is not your Lamb and your Savior, be reminded tonight He will be your judge. And if you do not allow Jesus Christ to take away your sin in God's name, in what are you trusting? To the north, propitiation. To the north, the presence of God. To the north is offered the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God. To the south, the judgment of God. 
Oh, how wonderful it is tonight to rest in His atoning blood and to know the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses from all sin. And so there is no lamb shed tonight. The first thing I needed to do in preparation for the priesthood was to learn to preach. No minister in this church learns how to slay a lamb. No seminary teaches that tonight. Not a single lamb is being offered on any altar in the world tonight in the name of Jehovah God. Because Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and obliterates once and for all the offering of any other lamb. He has atoned once and for all for our sins. How wonderful tonight to come to the table of the Lord and listen to Jesus say through the words of Paul, this do in remembrance of me. This table tonight is not a reenactment. May God help us so that we should never perform a mass in this church. This is not a reenactment, nor will it ever be a sacrament. It does not dispense grace. It announces grace. It does not provide atonement. It remembers atonement. It is finished. And we in our memories tonight place our hands on the elements of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. And we remember Him. And we point to Him. And we say, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. For the satisfying substitute, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by His blood and by the meat of His life and by the skin that gave us the first copies of the Word, and by His clothing, we are dressed in righteousness alone. The Lamb of God, my Lamb, and your Lamb. Dear Lamb of God, we remember you, and we give thanks. Amen. Oh.